Howdy folks, and I'll get myself up here front and foremost, Owen from EMF, we have an episode, the first inaugural episode of EMF TV, let's call it, <laughs> and I've none other than Michael Hayes, of the Michael Hayes Fitness Coach, Mental Health Fitness Coach, <laughs> Michael Hayes Fitness Coach, the <laughs> Mental Health Fitness Coach, all the way from Perth, Western Australia, Michael, give us a quick intro to yourself, your business, and what the hell you're up to at the moment. Yes, Mental Health Fitness Coach is the new venture that I've started into. Basically, it is online coaching for anyone that is interested in getting in better shape with more of an emphasis on how you feel and your mental health. So worrying a little bit less about the scale and your body fat percent, while we obviously want to get them better, but really looking at how you feel, how your mind is, how your stress levels are, and how your sleep is. Awesome stuff. So... You work at the gym currently, and you oversee personal trainers, and you're doing this on the side, so you're doing offline coaching, online coaching. What's that all about? Yep, so I do, so I look after a team of uh, personal trainers in a uh, rec center here in WA. I also coach a small group training program that I run out of the same gym, and then I decided I wanted to do the online coaching because I wanted to have a bit of a wider reach on people and just impact people a little bit better. Awesome, awesome. So look, we'll we'll get straight into it. What we'll try and do with these, I'll probably chat to you now um, as often as I can and we'll get questions from all the people you deal with, all the people I deal with. Presumably quite different in Australia maybe that things are going um, just a bit different than they are here. Here's a question for you, sir. I had someone say to me, what's better for fat loss, weight loss, a mixed, varied diet or kind of a clean, boring, standard type diet? Whatever one you can stick to, that puts you in a deficit. That's it. <laughs> and for all the people that may not understand, what's a deficit? Right, so basically on a really, really easy scale, let's just imagine that my hand is the amount of calories that you can have on any given day. So from here to here is how many calories you're allowed. If you go over the height of my hand in calories, you'll put on weight. If you come a little bit less than the length of my hand in calories, you'll lose weight. So you're basically figuring out what your maintenance amount of calories are. With your maintenance is just basically how many calories you can eat each day to maintain your weight. And you want to come a little bit under that. And it doesn't matter what it's made up of. One thing you might want to consider is keeping your protein high to hold on to your muscle mass. And then your carbs and fats can be whatever they want to be. But deficit in the calorie is number one. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. And I'll just take this moment to say, Michael used to have a Tipperary accent. He, he's genuinely from Tipperary, <laughs> but he's been living in Australia for a while now, and I don't know whether it's just to fit in with his co-workers or his girlfriend. He's adopted a bit of an Australian accent. So if you can't understand them, that's no problem. Uh, I will figure out how to put subtitles on this, and you will be able to get the information that it is, it is pretty good in fairness. So, moving swiftly on, talk to me, Michael, about... The industry, let's say in Australia, and I'm sure it's similar over there, why is the, in the world is there so much crap out there when we know so much about sports medicine, sports and exercise science, the actual mechanisms necessary for weight loss? Why is it so hard? And why do so many people feck it up? Simplest way to answer this one is that there's a lot of people out there that want to make a quick book. It's easy to prey on someone's um, weight loss or, or weight gain motions when you're, you're overweight and you want an easy way out. And someone says to you, take this pill and you'll lose eight kilos in four weeks. And you go, oh, crap, yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh, that's not reality, unfortunately, as you and I both know. And now, thankfully, a lot more people know. But there's just so many people out there that literally are preying on your emotions to say, you know, here's here's your your golden ticket to weight loss just take it off me and, and you're golden but at the end of the day that is not how it works as we said just a second ago it comes down to those calories in versus calories out plus a few other things obviously but too many people out there are trying to just take money off people for the sake of it one of the main reasons that i got into the online coaching too i guess was that 
it's there's simple science out there that everybody knows, but nobody wants to believe. It takes a little bit of hard work on the client side to get the goals, but you shouldn't be looking at the, you know, at the twelve week fix or the, the two week pills or whatever it is that people are selling out there. You want something that's sustainable and long term that you can stick stick to. Yes, if you take some of these things that people are selling, you might actually lose some weight. But come back to me. 12 weeks or 12 months after that and we'll see how much weight you've still put off or how you're going then absolutely absolutely so that leads me into my next question somebody does apply some form of work whether it's their diet or their training or they subscribe to a way of eating or a program and they do lose some weight initially and their goal is obviously to keep that weight off for ever and maybe lose a bit more in the future how does one set up uh, a program or diet or lifestyle to lose weight and keep it lost forever? Like, are there any tips that you would have? They're like, yes, put this in place and you'll keep progressing all the time forever. And that's where you can really do some life changing stuff. I guess without sounding like you or I or any other online coach that we're involved with knows everything Getting in touch with someone like ourselves, to be honest, is one of the best places you can start just because what we do with online coaching is we teach you all the things. So I don't go to your house and do the shop for you or I don't take you to the gym and hold your hand through a session or count reps for you or anything like that. You're given all the tools that you need and you go off and you apply them to your life. The only contact you have with me or with you is through your your shared your shared app or your shared messages or whatever way you work as yourself, you're given it and you have to apply it. And because the person has to apply it themselves, they learn how to do it. They get repetition of doing it themselves. And then once they finish with us, you know, they may not keep doing it a hundred percent, but they'll have all the tools there that if they start putting a little bit of weight back on, they know what to do and to get themselves going as well. Um, like, look, you can get some fantastic PTs who will do the exact same thing. You know, there's some really good people out there as well that can help you on a one-to-one basis in a gym and um, doing it too. But someone that you can find that will give you the tools, make you apply them, and make you keep applying them so they become habit is probably one of the most key things I think you can do. Yeah, absolutely. That's brilliant. Um, so give me something that I could go away and apply right now after watching this video what could i do right now today that would help me start that process that would be the first step along the road to figuring this stuff out and don't say sign up to me <laughs> or me <laughs> <laughs> only, only unless you want to <laughs> no or something else no. <laughs> probably depending on what level let's just assume this person is very um Let's say beginner, female, uh, mid-30s, hasn't done much before, doesn't know much about anything. I would take a food diary, see how much you're eating. Write down everything that you eat, take a picture of it every day for a week and find out what you're actually putting in and see it. Because a lot of people put in things that they don't even realize. Mm -hmm. And if you can actually see it or write it down, you'll start making some progress. Yeah. Yeah. And that can lead into going on something like my fitness pal, which is also fantastic, but that's probably a little bit more down the road depending on where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we'll try and wrap this up because we're trying to keep this short and sweet initially. Um, and we won't ramble on. We'd, uh, <laughs> I know I'm, <laughs> I'm an awful, like awful guilty at doing that from time to time. So look, talk to me quickly about training. Is there a best way to train? Is Should I do cardio if I want to lose weight? And if I go to the gym, like I don't want to get too big. I don't want to bulk up, you know. Uh, I just want to get a bit of toning. Should I do that? Or should I? I heard about HIIT, high-intensity exercise. Is that good for fat loss? Look, at the end of the day, if someone comes to me, what we talk about initially, we, we'll get their goals and what they want. But more importantly than that, try and figure out what you enjoy doing. So if you enjoy doing high-intensity training where your heart rate's up really high and you, you 
you're breathing really heavy and it's quite hard, go do it. If you enjoy going to the gym and lifting heavy weights, go do that. If you hate the gym, you hate weights, and all you want to do is walk the dog and run, you're fired. <laughs> go do that. <laughs> and there's there's no right or wrong answer for anyone. If you have specific goals, like you want to get a six pack or you want to get stronger, yes, you've got to lift weights. If you're doing it from the perspective of I want to feel better, I want to exercise more, I want to sleep better, I want to have less stress, do what you enjoy and keep doing it because you're not going to enjoy going to the gym and you're definitely not going to keep going to the gym just because a PT told you to or because a coach told you to. Find out what you love doing and do that and do more of it. Yes, sir. Brilliant stuff. That could even be polishing the dance floor in Havana Browns. It's cardio. It's exercise. Yeah, as long as you have your Coke Zeros. Oh, yes. Heineken Light, baby. <laughs> I would, a moment to thank our sponsors. No, we've no sponsors yet. <laughs> um, all right, here. Last question. So, sir, we'll finish it up. We'll round it up. The most important thing Michael Hayes has learned in 2017 thus far. Most important thing for me, I guess, for a background for everyone, I went through my own weight loss journey not too long ago and I've dropped about 15 kilos. Uh, well what done. helped me the most was being consistent. Uh, everybody goes off track and everybody gets downhearted every now and again when you put on weight. Tomorrow is another day. Keep pushing. Don't see a weekend where you've overeaten as a failure or you've got a reset or you've got a restart. You're still in it. You just had some high calorie food who cares that's life keep pushing on keep going your weight loss journey doesn't ever restart or doesn't stop or you don't fail you just keep going you start at it again next week and keep doing what you were doing that's probably the biggest thing i've learned this year brilliant thank you very much sir so first and foremost, obviously thank you for taking the time out to chat to me on this and um, folks if you like this um share it and comment on it even if you don't like it still share it and comment on it and like it but um, hopefully we'll be doing more of this i might interview some of the other friends and coaches that i have who are involved in the health and fitness industry and if you have questions just hit us up and um, we think about this stuff uh, probably too much of the time so we're only happy to help other people because we are learning as well all the time as i said or maybe I said it in the other take, when I went to Cardiff to do my master's, I found out how much I didn't know, and it was frightening. Um, so if you ask us a question, we don't know the answer, brilliant, we learn something. If we do know the answer, we'll try and help you figure it out as well, how, however we got there, okay? So look, um, EMF TV, episode one, over and out. Thank you, Michael. Good night, mate. Enjoy the rest of all your Australia day. Cheers, mate. It's been Dinkin.